Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about uh, this. You've probably seen this headline or something similar recently talking about how if the US went vegan that we would be able to feed a lot more people, about 350 million more people. So this is based on this uh, very recent study. The opportunity cost of animal-based diets exceeds all food losses. So the focus of the study is essentially on food waste, but a specific kind of food waste. So the researchers distinguish between two types of food waste, the conventional food loss, so what we tend to think of as food waste. So something like letting uh, food that you buy go bad. And then this sort of um, hidden, I think they actually use the, the word hidden, uh, food loss that is inherent to food production, what they call opportunity food loss. And while we can substantially curb uh, this conventional food loss or food waste just by like using the foods that we buy, not letting them go bad, not letting them spoil, and also by not overeating, by not eating too many calories. Opportunity food loss requires a change in diet, essentially. It requires us to change the types of foods that we're buying. And by we, I mean the majority of Americans. And that's because animal products, especially beef and pork and milk, are not efficient food sources. This is something that has been known. It's something I've talked about a lot on this channel, but it's really good to have a study like this that so clearly shows this to be the case, I guess, especially given uh, other recent studies that aren't so great, studies that are looking at uh, essentially the same things, kind of dietary patterns and land use. There's this one that got quite a bit of media attention because they concluded that a vegan diet wasn't best in terms of carrying capacity. Saying that a vegetarian diet is the best for the world because of carrying capacity, it's like saying that a school bus is the best vehicle for a family of five because of carrying capacity. There's also this one where, <laughs> it's so ridiculous, they assumed that the extra food that we would produce, again, if we were eating uh, like a plant-based vegan diet, that this extra food would lead to higher rates of obesity because we would just eat the food instead of like, exporting it. Anyway, Mod Vegan did a really great breakdown of this paper and all of the problems in this paper there are many problems with this. Uh, she has a, a two-part series on her channel. Check it out. So in this new study, the focus of this video, uh, they didn't just assume that if Americans did adopt a, a vegan diet that we wouldn't just keep growing what we've always been growing. Like farmers wouldn't just keep growing alfalfa for non-existent cows because obviously. Instead, they used computer modeling to figure out crop replacement ratios that worked, and they looked specifically at those nutrient yields to see what kind of opportunity waste animal products really represent. And not only did they compare animal products to plant alternatives that are similar in terms of calories and protein, so like soy instead of like grapes or something, right, that wouldn't really be a useful comparison, they also looked at various vitamins and minerals as well. As you can see, the plant alternatives dominated here. So animal products mostly dominated in things that we don't want more of, like saturated fat, cholesterol, and salt. The only essential nutrients that they were higher in were selenium, B3, and unsurprisingly B12, all three of which we can easily get on a vegan diet. They also have a really interesting section on bioavailability, pointing out that Obviously, nutrient absorption from various plants is usually lower than from animal products. Again, obviously it depends on the nutrient, but that this probably doesn't matter because for one thing, we would expect adaptation to these lower nutrient intakes, for example, by increasing absorption efficiency of something like iron. And plus their model showed that their plant-based diet provided way more of nutrients like iron and calcium and zinc anyway, so this pretty much makes any concern of bioavailability uh, a moot point. They also talk about useful uh, cooking, processing methods that can improve absorption like fermentation and soaking, and they talk about potential benefits of consuming less of certain nutrients like iron. Because excess iron is also a risk factor for such non-communicable diseases as type 2 diabetes or metabolic syndrome, lower iron ingestion among vegetarians may in fact prove protective. They do briefly talk about the economic effects of the U.S. going vegan, adopting this plant-based diet, um, but it's not the focus of the study, and they note that 
that this is pretty difficult to gauge. Nonetheless, they conclude that a switch to plants will likely result in an economic loss given that animal-based foods contribute more to GDP. They think that this might be partially offset by growth in new sectors, so mock meats and whatnot, um, and I, I understand that they're trying to be cautious, but I think that their wording could be stronger here. I think we would absolutely expect growth in these sex sectors. We absolutely would expect more mock meats, more cheeses, you know, more milks, eggs, all those types of foods made from plants. Of course, how much this would offset the loss is hard to say without further study. They also note that the surplus food produced, again, enough to feed an additional 350 million people, that this would be an economic advantage because we would sell it, we would export it, right? And not eat it. And finally, the switch to a vegan diet would save the US a lot of money when it comes to healthcare and fighting climate change about $80 billion total, 0.6% of GDP. In other words, these savings alone would more than make up the loss from switching to plants. Add in growth in new sectors, again, mock meats and whatnot, and also this surplus food that we'd be, we would be exporting, and it really seems like Americans would benefit economically from adopting a vegan diet. Now, of course, it would be great to have study on this, you know, focused on diet and the economy, uh, especially given that this is a pretty common argument against adopting a vegetarian or vegan diet, this, you know, fear of industry loss or job loss. But as far as this study goes, it's pretty awesome. And it does a pretty good job of dispelling this myth that we couldn't feed the world if we went vegan. To the contrary, we would be able to do that. We'd probably be able to retire a lot of land and let it return to forest, which that's pretty dope. So that's it, really. I just wanted to, to talk about this. It feels weird, honestly. I feel like, <laughs> like a, I don't know, I'm just kind of, that. that's the study. It's cool. Okay, bye. I don't know. I don't really have much to add or, you know, any sort of criticism. Obviously, I gave it a slight, slight criticism in terms of um, the the strength or the, the tone when talking about the growth in new sectors, but like, that's not even, I don't know. That's all. <laughs> That's all I really have to say and it feels it feels weird it feels like what is the point of this video but again I'm trying to do more um, positive videos and I think it's good to bring even more light to to stuff like this to really good research in general but particularly when we're talking about something really important like land use and feeding people and the environment etc obviously they didn't touch on animal welfare or anything like that which makes sense I mean how exactly do you do you quantify that? Um, I mean, obviously it's, it's very, very important and it's something that we should be thinking about and I think should be at the forefront of the, the conversation. But yes, yeah, it's not exactly something that you can quantify other than saying that these are the number of animals that are being slaughtered, right? Anyway, don't know where I'm going with that. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Comments down below. Please let me know what you thought about the study if you've read it or if you've read um, the articles because now that I think about it, I don't think I've actually read, <laughs> I haven't actually read any of the articles. So um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you thought about those if you if you read them. I know the independent, I think that's the headline that I shared and I think a, a couple other um, outlets have reported on it as well. Anyway, thanks again. Subscribe, that's cool. Support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Do I always do that when I say it? Patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And I will have a new video very soon.